hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm gonna be giving you part 12 of what if naruto's a elite blue eye uchiha remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also go ahead and check out the brand new episode over in anime king 3 of what if naruto was neglected with joshin sealed inside of him and I enjoy that guys and I also post a brand new episode of what if Naruto's betrayed by Hagromo so go ahead and enjoy that as well and remember if you're new and this is the first time you're hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos on both anime king anime king 2 and anime king 3 yes you heard that correctly I have three channels anime king anime king 2 and anime king 3 which I post on every single day for you guys to enjoy three with new what is a day for you guys to enjoy so Click that red subscribe button and become part of the Enemy King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying talking about all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last spot we left off, as Yujiu had made her way out with Kakashi and Tenzo, as they were to retrieve Jiraiya's body, but what she didn't know was, was that mission was fake and it was just a setup. Yes, she was being set up to use. Meanwhile, as Naruto was with Aizuraibe, a young girl on the beach, as one of Orchmar's former associates, Amaki had experimented on the girl, and now she was half fish, half girl. As she had gills, yes she did, as she caught some catfish for them. As Urchumar sat down with her son as she told him that these girls were not right for him, as Naruto had called her up in her actions of telling Yujito that he would never be with her. As the both of them argued for a bit but nothing too intense, as they calmed down after a while as Aisurabi came back along with Yujito as they grilled the fish right there. Time passed at Konoha as Kurunai told Itachi that he was to go to the forest. It was regarding his uncle as Kurunai knew, but as a Kanoha ninja she decided to keep her mouth quiet. This was disobeying the Hokage orders, but she would keep her mouth quiet because she wouldn't. Let it happen like last time, when she by Minato lies about Naruto being, well, unstable. Itachi made his way to the forest as he met the accountant, as the man was being protected by one of the seven ninja swordsmen, as Itachi was swamp, as Naruto left all of his access to him. Itachi did not understand why would he do all of that, as he no own billions, as he can tap into his trust fund, and the man will guide him and do what he is normally do. But he wanted to speak to his uncle first, as the accountant knew that he would ask that, as he gave Itachi a phone. Sometime in the next week his uncle would call him, so he should look out for the call, as Itachi agreed. With that, the Konoha troops were coming so they had to spread apart, as they left. Meanwhile, as Yujito was wearing a mask, as both her and Naruto and Urchimaru made their way to the ship, as Gato was there, as Amaki has been working secretly for Minato, as Naruto wanted to know what it was and what he was doing. Meanwhile, at Kanoha, as Minato had spoken to the fragment of Naruto's soul that was in the seal once again, as Naruto thought that he was all that, but Minato said something. He also had people outside of Kanoha. The Dying God and the Origami Angel, which he would use at his disposal. Meanwhile, Yujiu, she had tear Yamato apart, literally, as she tore one of his arms off and cut off his leg. The man was still alive, as he was somehow was still alive, but in a condition where he would never be a ninja ever again. His body was bricked up badly, even Kakashi was messed up a bit. The girl had fought, she fought with everything that she got. As Minato told them to knock her out and use her as bait for Naruto, then they were to kill him or if they could bring him back here, and Minato would execute him himself. But the girl had fought with everything she got but she still got knocked out when Kakashi pulled out his monkey to Sharingan as special 
Genjutsu that he created, seeing that he didn't have the Tsukiyomi, as he was able to subdue her. She woke up in a cell, but she was ready, as she was able to break out of the cell and make her way. As they wouldn't keep her for long, all of her seals, all of her weapons were gone, but she would get out of here. As Naruto had trust in her, he knew how strong she was and that she would handle herself. So yeah guys, so basically that's what the thought you guys gain. Switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So this is the beginning soon episode. With you, Jo, as she made her way, she didn't stop. As she peeped around the corner, she spotted a woman laving her hair with brown eyes. She was wearing a black cloak with red clothes design on it. High colors. As her lips were painted with a pink lipstick. As a woman was wearing flat, black sandals, the hidden rain headband on her forehead that was crossed out. It was none other than Conan. As Ujo narrowed her eyes at the woman, Conan came to a stop. As she turned her head towards Ujo's direction, Ujo took cover in the corner as she calmed herself. Who the hell is she? She whispered in her mind. The hidden rain? She could probably be a poser, she thought to herself. But her trained instinct warned her not to take that woman out there lightly. For someone who was claiming to be from the same village, as a dead, immediate, former, rain taggy, Hanzo of the Salamander, that person was to be trifled with. As she glanced back around the corner to gather more visual on the origami wearing lady, her eyes widened as a woman was four inches away from her. Four inches! As she looked on her with that emotionless gaze, the girl was taller than her. Half a head taller, the lady hadn't even made a single sound as she made her way towards her. Yujiyo Uzuki, Konan said. Yujiyo spat the two needles in her mouth at her. The smoke bomb seals that were edged on the two needles exploded. She shot past Conan and burst through the exit with incredible speed. Conan mentally applauded the younger woman, tenacity, as her body broke up into sheets of paper. I love a good chase, she said. Entertain me until the blue, Uchi arrives, as she made her way after Ujiyo. Meanwhile, on the other side of the continent, Blue rubbed his temple with his left hand. As he adjusted the weight of Amaki over his shoulder, he was under a street lamp. As he shifted the unconscious scientist over his shoulder, as he was looking down towards the ground. The building that Yuchito was in was blazing. As all the alarms were on, but that was the point. She was gathering evidence, documents, photos, videos of the four Tokagi criminality. This place that looked like a normal family home was Amaki base in Fire Country, where he received the four Tokagi funding and he could hunker down for the next few months if the heat on him was too much trusting that the blonde Kagi would throw off anyone that was on his trail it was a root base the very last that Danzo would have fled to and the war hawk he was charged to protect and provide for Amaki whenever Gato was unable to which was surprisingly frequent Minato was paying the scientists to experiment on evolving Kiki Genkai's piles and piles of dead bodies of failures once there was a breakthrough, Minato was going to sell the laboratory made bloodline to the highest profit. After all, money and fame were Minato's greatest motivators out of every single thing else. And also his envy for anyone that was equal or above him. Like Naruto, Blue Uchiha, Minato didn't have it easy growing up, facing abandonment, neglect and abuse. Much like Naruto. But Naruto wasn't sure what specifically made the man be what he is right now. But that thought process was for later. Now he wondered what to do about Ujiyo. He hadn't foreseen the dying god and his origami angel entering the field this soon. That was a miscalculation on his part. Minato had one up him with those two. He shook his head. Not for long. Orkai, the dark skinned Sani, came to his side, holding a briefcase in her left hand and a phone in her right. Do you have anyone in Zieki? The corners of her lip twist up in a smirk. Of course I do, Naruto. As the man exhales suddenly, at who was staying for her stead? To be the part-time mob doctor for the Yakuza. As his brain started to calculate, as he threw Amaki over to the side, he nodded as I started to waste no time as she tore into the man, using her strong limbs. As she ripped the man apart literally, she finally had her revenge. As bloody and disgusting as it was, she got her revenge. As Naruto looked towards his mother, as Uchimaru made the call, Kabuto answered. Blue had a few messages to send. Meanwhile, Ka, Ka, Yujiro head snapped up at the moonless sky as she leaped 
from branch to branch. She leaped out of the tree as a tornado of paper sliced the tree to pieces as she rolled on the ground and leaped away. As she stood there, a drop of sweat slipped down her face as the paper came together and formed half of Conan's face, the other part breaking away into paper slips. Yuji was in a low stance, her hand and feet on the ground like a cat ready to pounce at any moment. Poor girl, Conan cooed slightly, her voice showing no emotion at all. You could hear nothing. It just sounded bland, empty. You need rest, do you not? Back off, lady. Yujiro says she speed through hand signs. Come on, Chucker. Don't feel me now, she said to herself. She finished set of hand signs as a pair of arms embraced her from behind. Poof. Yujiro, body switched seal, took them high in the sky, right in the center of a murder of crows. As the crows caw around them, as she break the arm hole on her as she flipped in mid-air. She wondered how she got up in the air. She was focusing on a branch a few yards away, but she didn't notice that some of the crows had sticks in their claws. What the? As she blocked the strike in towards her chest, but Conan twists as her strike came in down towards her low stomach. As she staggered back, she moved. As they were still falling, she lashed out towards Conan's shoulder, but Conan broke up in the paper and appeared behind her. But a cloud of darkness covered Yuji as Conan backtracked as she raised her hand before releasing them. Paper shrikings fly from her hand and stab onto the crows that were trying to block Yuji with the darkness. The call got louder and louder and louder from the crows as they seemed to be getting angry. As all of them seemed to be looking at her before, they all vanished and Yuji was gone. What just happened, Conan said. She held onto her Akaski ring. Wondering what to do as she considered. She wasn't going to leave Zieke until Yujiro is recaptured or until Blue is dead. Paper clone Jutsu. Tink clones separate from her body and fly off, looking for the vanished woman. Meanwhile, directly below, the original Conan as Yujiro was crouched down into a bush. As there was a spectacle girl beside her. Silver hair that was cut and stopped right at her neck. A small but nose and lips devoid of lipsticks. She was wearing a large, reflective glasses and around her forehead was a headband for hidden chill. She was wearing a full body suit, blue, and a jacket, and dark blue boots. Who are you? said Yujiu. Not sure if she could defend herself in such close quarters. It was the entire reason she was running from the rain, missing in. My mistress tell me you're one of my love, special people. As Yujiu neared her eyes, before she winks, Ear Kabuto, the girl's smile still looking up at Conan in the sky, very very high up. I see. My love mentioned me before. Well, yeah, once or twice, said Yujiu. She couldn't say that Naruto called her a nut job. Each time he went to chill and come back. Kabuto was one of the hidden stone orphans that Naruto had rescued all those years ago. But she was one of the more zealous ones who kept a deep, deep admiration for him. As Kabuto blushed as her glass heat up, I am so happy, she said. My love speaks of me to his friends. As she stared into nothingness. My love, she said. Yujiro sweat drop. Do you have a blade on you? Any kind is fine. Even a kunai would do. Kabuto removed a small scroll from her back. As she unsealed a katana. Conan was still in mid-air. Just hovering there. Motionlessly. Silently. My sword? Said Yujiro. As she pulled out her blade to the sheet. It was hers. Blood was still on it from her battle. But it was hers with the words Naya, carved into the handle. The blade was made from a mysterious metal from Hidden Star, carved out of Hashiga Core, precious pink meteorite, and stolen by Yujito herself in her youth. It was a dull shade of pink with a murky white edge at the blade tip as she curled her fingers around the purple handle as she held on to it tight. Along the length she had engraved the eight faces of the moon, all the faces from new moon to full moon. This was her 13th katana, the only one that she made with her own hands. As the others could not measure up to this. The other blades that she had. But she was confused. Her blade was named Lunite. Where did you get her? She asked Kabuto. Kakashi Hatake pawned it off to the Yakuza boss so I could heal him and his half dead friend, Yamato Tenzo. Apparently, you have a bounty in the Iron Yakuza. And also, that sword is made from the Hoshiki meteorite. It's rare, like one of a kind rare. Go figures. The value of her sword aside. The place where Blue had lost control of his emotion and burned on a good part of Zieke. But she couldn't understand why they were angry at her. 
why did she have a price on her head? After all, they were the one that let the attack happen. So if anything, they were to blame. But she pushed that back to her mind for now. As she clicked her blade back in the sheet. Thanks. No problem. I can untangle your chakra for you. But that would alert her. As she pointed at Conan. Who was still just there in the air. Kakashi Genjutsu was long time disbanded. But the last bits of his chakra was still tangling her chakra control. Are you ready? Kabuto had been ordered to keep Conan occupied for as long as possible. And that could only happen if she had a high A rank Konoichi backing her up. After all, Kabuto wasn't cocky enough to think that she could take on the S rank ninja by herself. Technically, she could keep Yujiro safe on the battlefield. No, that was smart. Blue only wanted the paper angel outside the hidden rain for a short while. The other members of Akaski as well for that matter. As Kabuto wondered why the love of her life just didn't run over the hidden rain. She knew he could, especially now that he was all powerful. He could teleport them all to safety if he wanted to. She shook that thought out of her head for now. As they weren't in immediate danger yet. I'm ready to say Yujiro. As Kabuto brought out a leather belt. Bite this and look at my finger. She bit on a leather belt as she looked at the finger, bursting herself whatever was going to happen. You're going to feel a small thug. As she flashed through hand sign. As her hand turned into a fist. As she rammed it right into Yujiro's gut. Poof. A cloud of smoke escaped from the bush that they were in. And Conan looked down. There you are. Meanwhile, in the northern region of the Hidden Stone, Sorcerer is currently inside his Hirko puppet. Did you say something? He said. A tick mark came on Deidre's forehead. Have you not been listening to me at all? Well, your voice. It's easy to do now, said Sorcery. Mm. I said that one of my old explosion core buddies said that Wing Senpai went on a vacation in hidden salt water before. They got a distress call. What is even with you and this girl? She's my senpai, Deidre yell defensively. His cheeks become a bit red. Now shut the hell up about it, he said. Sorcerer was taken back by the new Akaske member. Reaction. Wing Senpai? I said shut it, said Deidre. Just shut it. Who is she exactly? My senpai, Deidre said. As he recalled the image of her dark skin, dreadlocks. Talk a bit to Jonin. She introduced me to the explosion core and taught me everything I knew. Hiroko, the puppet resisting a finger. I think. I'm not asking you to think, Sorcerer Dana. Said Deidre. Coming from the person that said art is an explosion. And you would think that art is an immortal or some shit. Bah. Immortal plastic bottle. We're getting off track here, said Sorcery. You're obviously feeling some sexual attraction to this winged senpai. Sorcery Donna, shut your mouth and don't say that felt. Look, I'm only saying that it's not good for your career in Akaske. If you keep on keeping active ties with your former home, you did try to assassinate Tishikage after all. These bonds are very dangerous to keep when you're a wanted shinobi like us. They're not active ties or anything. They're just memories. And my career in Akaski is some bullshit you just came up with to rope me up in some sad excuse for a living. Excuse me? You're excused, said Deidara. What do you mean by that, Sasori asks. I mean that you got no friends, Sasori Dana. And I find that very sad. I have friends, Sasori said. Contacts don't count. They are scared of you. It wasn't even two months yet since Deidara joined the Akaski and he was partnered up with Sorcerer of the Red Sand. And every single person the man met up with, they were deathly afraid of him. As he saw the man was watching when he talked to one of his old friends in the explosion core. And he looked quite angry despite still being that puppet. Hey, I can be your friend if you want. My art is my friend. Those are the saddest words I ever hear in my life. Sad old Sorcerer Dana. I feel sorry for you. That was the only thing the puppet said, really. I pity how lonely you are. Everyone is so scared of you. Well, except for me. As he pushed Dator away from him. Let's go and find your wing, senpai. I'll turn her into art and then we can all be friends. As he loomed over Dator. How does that sound, Dator? Yeah, yeah, my offer is still on the table. Lonely old sorcery Donna. A crow landed down as it looked towards the two of them. As it narrowed its eyes towards him. It all happened in a flash. There wasn't even a sound. Daedra slumped down as Saucer caught him. As the man coughed up blood on Saucer. Oh, well, he could barely talk as Daedra's head fell forward with a bump on Saucer's wooden Hiroko puppet. And that is when Saucer saw it. A pair of blue sand bonds. One of them stabbed in Daedra's neck and the other one stabbed into his skull. And the red liquid dripped. Hiroko gaze looked up rather quickly, looking for the assailant that took out his fellow S-rank so quickly, without even a sound. 
and no chakra output. 781 kilometers away. Blue. Titan's red glove around. Crystalline grip. As he was in Hanbei City, far away. As he looked through the scope. On pure instinct, he saw nothing through his blind eyes. As the crow that was there watched sorcery move off with Deidre. It connected to his sensory ability as his mind painted that image of the sight in front of him. Well, not in front. As he could see the heart in his chest that was applying chakra that spread out and connected to the compartment of the puppies that he was in. The real sorcery that was inside. As he calculated the wind pressure and the speed. As he fired the last four shots, the bullets slam against rocks. As they turn, they boom, they fire. As they ricochet off each other and fly. Two of them stab into sorcery, shoulder joint. One fly through the eye and the other one blasted. The puppet straw hat off his head and nailed it in the rock behind him. Sorcery looked down as Hiroko arms drop off. As they were about to drop with them, seeing that he was holding him up. He then saw light coming from the puppet. I see that came from the Senmon that was melting right through his puppet. The sniper wanting to exit Hirko. He didn't have the option of staying as the puppet was crumbling around all around him. He pulled a string with his ring finger, popping open the emergency hatch in the back. He rolled backwards as he dashed, sweeping towards the other corpse. I will analyze the acid in my workshop and report this to Lord Pain. As he picked up the lifeless bomber and placed him on his shoulder, as Blue popped out the empty cartridge that had the send bonds with acid inside. As he popped in a fresh cartridge of Sinbon needs alone. As he started that first calculation in his mind. Before he fired only once. Sorcerer fate was sealed. Sorcerer was sailed back as he slammed into Hiroko. Dissolving form. As he was nailed right into his chakra core. As Hiroko break down and fall right on Sorcerer. The acid seeping into his puppet joints. Burning and eating away his body. But Sorcerer of the Red Sand was long dead before his back even hit the ground. Back in fire country, as Blue flexed his fingers, now, where are you Kakazu? As his ear twitched, as he turned his direction towards wind country, money isn't everything, he scoffed under his breath. I should know, I had a little. His sarcasm was lost on Yujito, as she silently watched her crush, as she did not speak because she didn't want to break his concentration. Meanwhile, in wind country, bounty collection section. The catch is a complete, said Kakuzu as he threw the scroll back to a grey haired man who dab his forehead with a cloth. One million Ryu is missing. But Mr. Kakuzu, sir, you hired me to kill your brother. And I did. As Kakuzu stood there with his partner, the masked man that was behind him. Well, he wasn't saying anything at the moment. But we agree on five million Ryu, Mr. Kakuzu, sir. The dirty. Merchant Beck. He had hired Kakuzu alone to kill his brother, so... He could claim his father's fortune. A simple case of sibling rivalry turned murderous over money nonetheless. He would have been more hard if he was a normal person but Kakazu was the normal person and he knew that he would get killed if things didn't work out well. For 5 million Ryu, the agreement that we reached, it specifically said so. His wife got involved and I killed her Kakazu said coldly. The woman that came at him with a kitchen knife, he took it from her and Hear it right through her heart and then his kids got involved as well the merchant didn't want to hear what Kakazu did to his nieces and nephews I'm a nice person Shinichi I'm only adding an extra 1 million for my troubles but I never asked you to come on Kakazu senpai go easy on him huh said the masked man I am not going to listen to some brat who got his ass handed to him on a silver platter by a school teacher a retired Kunoichi Nonetheless, now sit there and stay quiet, like a good little bitch, Kakazu said. He grabbed the man by his throat. Now, where's my money? Suddenly, a needle whipped past Obito, mass, as it bursts right through Kakazu's skull. His Jientan couldn't save him as the acid leaked into his brain. As he fall, his head snapping on the table. The other people that were close by ran from underneath the tarp. As the weathers, the elements, was not sparing them as it was just four giant wooden beams with a tarp over their head so the sand was getting in. The man picked up the money and ran out of there as Obita flipped over the table and went behind it. His eye went to Kakazu unmoving body, refusing to believe that the man was actually dead already. But the Jintan wasn't moving at all. But Kakazu was gone and his soul was pulled down into damnation 
by a skeleton hand that dragged his soul into hell. Back in the land of the living, as Obito looked towards the projectile, the needle that embedded itself inside Kakuzu's head, Naruto. The man vanished in a whirlpool as he traced a chakra that Naruto left behind purposely to let his clanmate know where he was going. As 30 minutes later, after moving, he would find himself in Fire Country. There was a rock with a handwritten note on it. It was not Naruto handwriting. The CPU clan. The inconvenience of going all the way back to Wing Country to find Blue deserted him. He could just use Kamui after all. But Naruto had sent him a message as he purposely let the needle pass his head and Obito didn't have his Sharingan activated. But Obito wasn't scared of the Blue Uchiha, even though he should be. With Yujiro and Kabuto, a massive explosion went off near Kabuto. While she was airborne and she was blown away as she slammed into the side of the dungeon building, shaking off her concussion as she gritted her bloody teeth as she spin a pair of scalpels in her palms. As a hail of paper came as she ripped through them, spinning and slicing. Her skin was ripped open and torn, but the regeneration healed her wounds as she made her way to Conan and engaged in a short, scuffle hand-to-hand -hand combat as she sliced that Conan's shoulder as a wound, build out paper as she swift and sliced towards her leg but the same result paper Conan swift as she kicked her right inside of the head that launched her backwards 17 straight minutes of fighting and appear had he even landed a single blow on Conan's robe they cut her skin but it was nothing but paper she raised her hand towards Kabuto but she had to pull it back as Yujiro came down slicing Yujiro twist and launch her blade right towards Conan's heart but Conan smirk as paper shirking came raining down Yuji jumped back as he started to slice and tear apart all of them before it could injure her as she flashed around the tree and vanished she appeared on Conan's left wings came from Conan's back that blew her away as she floated up straight in the air before she released another arc wave of paper as Yuji was sliced and dice but she was slowing down and she got cut across the cheek Conan appeared behind her and grabbed her holding on to her fascinating child but you're tired you're low on chakra you need rest as she placed a suppression seal on Yujiu Yujiu felt her eyes flickering let go of me you weirdo as she pushed chakra down to her blade and sliced ripping the suppression seal as she smashed her head right into Conan's chin as the both of them fell as she was released Conan looked at her as she rubbed her chin feisty as blood was leaking from her lip, she got hurt. <laughs> this is the first time I've been injured in some while. I get it, you're old, said Yujiu. As she reached for one of the second pills that Kabuto gave her. As she called, Kabuto, you still alive? A dry cough came from somewhere in the forest, followed by a click as I made it in. Click back her dislocated jaw. Give me a second. What are we doing, said Yujiu? Are we running? Or are we killing this woman? How about as Kabuto's voice was being thrown on her own? To hide her relocation. We tried that killing thing. I'm not sure how long you can do this, she said. As she held onto her blade in her right hand and a chakra pill in her left hand. Conan scoffed. Yuji would dash to the right as Conan papers tear the dungeon wall to the side. As she rolled, the papers start to light up. Boom, they exploded the bombs, tearing down the remaining wall. She threw the pill in her mouth and bit down on it quickly as she pushed the chakra into the blade. She leaped out of the grave of the massive explosion as her feet skidded back a bit as she held her sword to the dark sky as she supported her shoulder with her left hand. As her blade started to buzzle, burn with black flames, Conan burst right out of the smoke coming towards her. Yujiro sliced her arm down as she created a cube in the air that was drawn by black lines coming from the blade. Astral Kinjutsu 8. Phase of the Moon Apocalypse of the Rabbit Goddess As she gripped the blade with both hands and stabbed the cube, a beam of pearly white light exploded out of the cube, tearing right through Conan's left torso. The moonlight then blazed up in the sky and stopped before it could leave Earth atmosphere. Yujiro pushed harder into the cube with her blade as Conan's body was warped into the beam of light, violently sucked in and sent to the sky, Kabuto draw drop, more or less, when a moon formed high in the sky, a goddamn moon. It was smaller than the real moon, 
and it seemed to be translucent to the night sky. The whole world stopped and looked up at the sky in horror as the night was devoid of lunar light but now it was being illuminated by a small it resembled a small piece of paper in the sky and it was translucent the tides of the water rose in reaction as the earth fought against the gravity of this new chakra moon that was created as blood started to leak from Yujiro's nose dark lines came from the cube that Yujiro was piercing as the dark lines run down her blade and wrapped on her hands she roared as she pulled her blade out of the cube and it was blown straight into space like it was blown into oblivion what everyone didn't know was that the moon was being attracted to a planet million light years away the origin of Hashiga Core falling star where Yujiro blade the material that it was made out of the fate of Conan was unknown the cube popped as Yujiro fell on the ground I I can't feel my hands she tried to wiggle her fingers but nothing as Kabuto came over as she did not touch a blade as the blade had fallen over to the side Kabuto, I, I can't feel them. Her fingers were completely black. I got you, Yujiro, said Kabuto. As she went through one sign, you'll be fine. I got you. Meanwhile, the current camp of the Siyoko clan, Obito didn't want to know who was inside that moon that was blasted away. As he made his way to the lone campfire, where all the people were gathered up around the flame, they weren't too close to the fire as they were on carpets, as they were eating and downing sweetened goat milk and water for a few others. The chief and his wife was not there for the clan dinner. As kindly chatter was going on, there was even visitors from the hidden sand there. Past and present Kazakagis always made it a priority to have a good relationship with the Siyoko clan. As a clan of nomads had been wandering the desert of the wind country long before the hidden sand was even a thing. So traveling between them and the hidden sand was given on both sides. They could come to the sand and the sand people came to them as well. The mass Uchiha flared his shuriken gun to life as he looked over to one side to the other. He was almost tricked to think that these people were defenseless, allowing him to just enter with less resistance than it took him to enter the inner rain. There was a tall man with a pole axe in his arm as he was wearing the traditional clothes of his people. He also had on a fanny pack wrapped around the front of his kimono. He had a few scratch and cuts along his face. The man stopped before Obito as he tore over the Uchiha. Obito looked up at him, not intimidated as he crossed his arms. Where is Naruto? You mean blue, right? The man said. You know, I've always known him as blue. The man says he scratched his cheek. You must be Obito. I am. Follow me, the man said. As he led Obito towards the chief residence, as he sweep open a tent flap. He also want me to give you this. As the man went into his fanny pack, and pulled out three rings for Obito. He didn't want me to polish them up or anything, just to give them to you as he gave me. Obito eyes bugged out at the blood stain I cast the rings. Kakasus was there as well. As his lone Sharingan show, Sorcerer and Deira. You okay, buddy? The man asked. Obito almost set the entire clan on flames with Amaterasu flame. He shoved past the man, ignoring the man's calls, as he stepped inside the chief quarters. There was a smaller fire burning inside. Red flames. There were two thrown carved out of a tree a white tree it seems they were decorated with the clothes of the Siyoko clan seated on them was a couple as a woman has her hair covered and her chin in her neck and the man was wearing a turban their eyes were focused on someone else not Obito someone sitting on a wooden stool the chief and the wife had smiles on their faces as they watched the visitor play with their child as blue bounced the one year old baby on his knee you're a big boy aren't you he said as he lifted the boy a little in the air as the baby was giggling the entire time you're just a bundle of joy, aren't you? As he tickled the baby's belly. Aren't you, he said. As he tickled him some more, the baby kept on giggling the entire time, making Blue smile. The sniper wasn't wearing bandages around his eyes, but a pair of thick, black pitch glasses. He didn't want to freak out his old friends. His sensory ability act as a vision for him, and that was all he saw. He didn't have his cloak on, just his red gloves and his dark clothing. But he has bandage on his feet, they remain. He has your eyes, Tancho, said Naruto. His wife chuckled into her hand. Hilarious, the chief said. I see that you have not yet been introduced to a comb. As Naruto shrugged, as he wiggled his finger in front of the baby, says, Combs, don't do it for me, so I don't bother. Chief Tanjo sat up, his wife face palm, anticipate her husband's next words. My wife cut my hair, he said. Would you like to cut his hair, Cupcake? Cupcake? As Naruto laughed a bit. As the woman looked towards him in a huff, 
You know, it will make you look more tolerable to look at. Ouch, said Naruto. She didn't mean anything mean by it, after all she was laughing. That is just how they were. You might even find your second half, Blue. Love and soulmate doesn't do it for me either, said Naruto. Come on, what about that girl they're always talking about? Kushina, when you used to travel with us. She was cut off as something jumped on Blue's back. As the person wrapped her hand up in his ear. Hey, hey, not the here, said Naruto. Maya, the sandborn mother called. Reprimanded the child with a stern shout. Get down from there and stop bothering your uncle. Horsey, 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 said Maya. Blue picked himself up, making sure to hold on the baby tight. As the girl wrapped herself on his back, as he started neighing, the girl on his back laughed, including the baby. Two more weights wrapped up on Blue. The five-year-old twins, both boys, laughed as Blue chuckled. Obita stood there, taking in all of this, stunned. It takes a special kind of person to go from murdering three s ranks to complain with children. Hey, Obita said. As Naruto turned, he had the audacity to look surprised. Yo, Obito, how's it going? As Obito marched forward. Who the hell do you think you are? As Naruto bent down, lowering the girl from his back as he passed the baby to her. Come on man, there are kids here. As he roughly the twins, lime green here and hushed them away with a whisper. Go to your mother, kids, he said. The children scurry away. As the woman welcoming them with a hug, the chief got up from his chair as he looked towards Obito with a glare. As Naruto gestured for them to calm down. Let's just relax, okay? We all had a long day. What's stopping me from burning this entire place to the ground, Naruto? Obito shouted. As he poke blue right in the chest. As the underworld simply chuckled, calming the chief down. The man helped his wife and children leave while he stayed for their safety. As he made them leave first. Do you know how hard it was to convince those guys to join? And you just killed three of my Akaski. Blame the rain Kagi. You should have stayed out of my business, said Naruto. Obita I evolved into the monkey the Sharingan. Blue pushed his glasses up his nose. I assume that you wanted a positive ID of your work buddy, said Naruto. As Obita growled, I've been patient for so many years, Naruto. The shit you pull reversed decades of planning. Blue shrugged, seeming undisturbed. Aren't you wondering why you're still alive? I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, Obito. We share the same heritage, the same bloodline. Most of all, you aren't a blood traitor like my sister. I'm even willing to forget that you attacked Kushina to get back on Kakashi. See? As shadows crept up Blue's face. I've already forgotten. As he placed a single hand on Obito's shoulder, it felt like a mountain had dropped on him. As his knees quiver, I've already forgotten, Blue whispered once again. As the hand on his shoulder dropped and Obito dropped to one knee, gasping for ear. Kakashi doesn't love Konoha. He loves his teacher, Minato. Blue corrected Obito's way of thinking. Raising Konoha to cinders wouldn't affect him at all. You might have noticed that he killed you for your eyes because he thought Minato would look at him more favorably. And he was right, I guess. Obito got up as he took a step back. Kakashi is more than Minato's favorite student. The guy is Minato lap dog, literally. What a friend. She didn't have to die. Obito could easily forgive Ren for not immediately reporting Kakashi crime of the fabricated story about his death. She was trying to bring Kakashi to justice. But he had to watch as Kakashi plunge Ashidori through her heart, killing her and creating a false story once again, just like what he did with him, saying that Kiri Shinobis kidnapped her and they seal the sand by inside of her. Obito lowered his head. She didn't. She didn't deserve to die. Naruto placed a hand on Obito's shoulder. It wasn't a hand with killer intent, it was calm. Obito removed his mask, showing his scar face, tears leaking from his eyes as his Sharingan deactivated. It was the only that his efforts in building and fortifying the Akatsuki had been set ablaze, but also that it had been debunked. His sense of mind, his drive, the reason he pushed, he believed letting loose the Kayubi and Konoha to get revenge for the villagers easy believing. The Hatsuki, fake story. Obito might have been from the same clan as Blue, but they weren't really close. Yes, they saw each other in the clan and they gave a respectful nod every now and then. Obito was also there to see Blue off the war when everyone was as well. But he wasn't in the clan when Blue had showed his dominance when the Uchiha clan had bowed to his power. But he knew that Naruto was smart, a genius for that matter. I want you to walk away from the Akasuke, said Blue. Obito released his mask as it fell. There's no Akaski left, is there? Instead of giving a straight answer, Naruto spoke. I also want us to make a deal. Obito didn't answer. He looked up at Naruto with depressed eyes. 
right now, Kakashi is in Zieke, injured and in the custody of the Iron Yakuza medics. That peak Obita interests. I want you to kill him. How you do it, that is up to you. When it is done, put him somewhere private where Minato can find him. Murdering, Kakashi was the straight point of Obita vengeance. But you recall this was an offer, not a request. In exchange for the trouble, I'll bring Rain back for you. Obita stepped back in shock as Naruto simply waved his hand. There was a poof. A crow materialized on Naruto's shoulder out of smoke. The crow had two purple markings under his eyes. The bird looked at Obito. It features softened with regret and mourning as it looked at him. The crow hid her face behind her wing. As she was unable to look at her teammate. As she wasn't able to tell the truth back then. She hid the truth from Konoha. All to protect a crush that never actually acknowledged her existence. Don't worry about the events of her afterlife. I'll erase them from her head. And to sweeten the deal, I'll seal away the recollection of her murderer. Still though, I can't take everything away or it will fracture her soul. Healing, those unseen scars is up to you. Whether or not you two get together is another thing entirely. The words come out of Naruto's mode. Bewildered Obito, when you've done what I told you to do, bring her body here to me. And I'll reunite the both of you and you can live. For how long you can live in your natural life. He also won't tell him that Rain wouldn't be 14 when she was brought back, as he would increase her age to the natural point of her body that it will be now. Well, Obito will see. As a crow then disperse into a small burst of feathers. So what do you say as Nuru remove his right hand glove? Do we have a deal, Obito? Obito looked at the hand. There was a twisting feeling in his gut that told him to run away, to get the hell out of here and do not trust this man, even though they share the same bloodline. No man should be able to bring back the dead like this. But, Rain. He saw her with his own eyes. That was her. Yes, it was her. You will resurrect Rain. I will bring Rain back from the dead, said Blue. Obita didn't know why, but he felt like the place was getting hotter as he glanced over where the chief was, who simply raised the eyebrow, but it didn't seem like the heat was affecting him. Obito, do you want this? Don't you want to see Rain again? Yes, I, I do, Obita said. She missed you, you know. Not even the pleasures of the afterlife can comfort her. Besides, I'm not asking much in return. Kill Kakashi and send his head to Minato. That is basically what you want to do, right? Right. Well? For Rain, Obita thought. Deal. As he grabbed Naruto's hand, fire coated their hands as blue. Smile widened into a wicked grin. Awesome. Obita pulled his hand away, looking for burn marks on the red flames, but there was none. None at all. Not even a tingle. You have 12 hours to get the job done. As Blue placed back on his club, or else, consequences, you understand. Consequences? You never mentioned consequences. It's not my fault you didn't ask. He didn't mention the consequences will be deadly. And, if Rain returned back from the dead, there would be consequences also. Obito didn't even ask if this kind of meat had opened the path towards Kakashi. Details matter, Obito. Before you agree to anything, you have to understand what you're agreeing to. As Obito felt like he signed a deal with the devil, and he had. I'll be right back, errands to run, you know? Obito wonder, what could the man have to do that have the ability to raise the dead? What kind of errands did he had? What errands, he asked. Blue grin as Obito saw nothing but sharp rows of demonic teeth that sent a shiver down his spine. His answer was simple, yet the meaning of the words themselves, they were complex. I'm gonna kill a god, said Blue. But guys, it'll be in steps right here. If you want to see part of to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out what if Naruto was neglected with Jashin sealed inside of him. And enjoy that, guys, over on Anime Making 3. And he also posts a brand new episode of What If Naruto Was Betrayed by Hagromo. So go ahead and enjoy it as well. And remember, if you're new, to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. But I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace.